Hey, this is Joe Gilder from HomestudioCorner.com. Here's probably the menu preference section that I go to the most when I'm using Studio One, and it's the audio setup page. Uh, real quickly, you can actually get to it from the start page. So if you go there a lot, uh, right down here, where it shows your audio interface, uh, you can quickly, you can see what's going on here, and if that's not right, just click somewhere and it'll open up that page, okay? So we have the audio setup page open right here. A couple of things to note. First of all, you can choose what device you're using. So if you have different audio interfaces for different applications or whatever, uh, here's where you can choose those, okay? Easy peasy. Next up, your device block size. This is the buffer size. So if you're used to another system that calls this the hardware buffer setting, or in Pro Tools, I think it's an HW buffer setting, this is it right here. It's not called buffer. That would be nice, but device block size, I'm sure, is a more accurate description. I don't know. But it lets you change your buffer setting, okay? This will vary depending on how much RAM you have installed. But for me, I can go up to 2048 samples or 1024 all the way down to 32 samples. Generally, I like to keep it somewhere in this range, 256 to 1024, uh, lower for recording and then higher for mixing. Uh, so that's just in general rule of thumb. As you change these, you'll notice your latency changes, and it'll read out right here, which is super helpful. You can't change any of these settings here, but they're there just to show you what's going on. So as I go down to 32 samples, you can see uh, my input latency is 4.47 milliseconds, and my output latency is 2.61 milliseconds, so it's pretty quick. And as we go up higher, it gets higher as well. Um, it, incidentally, if you're using a PreSonus Studio Live console, then this becomes a non-issue for recording because you can monitor directly off the board itself. So that's why, that's why my buffer is usually way up high like this. It doesn't matter. Um, per process precision, if your computer's having a hard time, you can play around with this to freeze up some space. Uh, sometimes maybe going down to single 32-bit processing will ease the process on your computer. Double 64-bit is generally preferred, so keep it there unless you're having issues. Uh, also, you can enable or disable multiprocessing, and also how many CPU cores you're using. Now, I'm not a nerd. You may want to read the manual for more about what these do, but I have found if I'm running Studio One, but I'm also running a video recording software or some other intensive piece of software, then sometimes Studio One starts to bog down or both start to bog down. If I And if I have both of these enabled, I'll come in and turn one off, or maybe both, and generally I find that it frees up some processing on the computer to go to the other, to the other piece of software, and then Studio One still actually handles it okay. So that's what those are there for, and this page you should become very familiar with because you're probably going to be in here a lot. Okay? Thanks. Bye. <laughs>